Hello, welcome back to the weekly financial talk point from Breed and Grow. My name is Peter Calvinan, Sylvie Day. And with me, I'm with the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer for Breed and Grow, Francis Kavinuli Lukorobi. You're very much welcome. Thank you. Previously, we were looking at planning. And we discovered that planning has four major key considerations. That is, who am I? That is, identity. Origin and where. That is, origin where I am. And destination. But destination is the first consideration if you are to plan. And of course, we have the fourth point, which is the factors, other factors that may affect our planning. Today, we turn to another key central factor, which is budgeting, the fuel tank, the engine of planning, budgeting, and it is the topic of focus. I'll begin at that very point. Mr. Gorori, when I budget, what have I done? When you budget, you do what we call financial planning you've been talking about planning okay. and you talked about those four stages involved in planning okay. and attaching monetary value to all those items involved in planning mm. is budgeting so to budget mm. is to attach monetary value or financial value to all the elements involved in budgeting. Does that make a difference between budgeting and making a to-do list? A to-do list is one of the components of budgeting. As, you, as we saw last time, when you budget, you must have interests. Okay. And then when you have interests, which are general visions and uh, objectives, mm -hmm. then you devote activities which should help you achieve those interests okay. now the activities you devote to help you achieve the general interest or the vision is what we call to-do lists okay. then budgeting is attaching financial figures or values to these activities where financial figures you mean in financial figures i'm talking about monetary value or money okay. in the case of uganda for example if my general interest the interest which i want to achieve maybe in 10 years time or 20 years time or five years time mm -hmm. is to have a good life i should define in monetary terms what that good life is for example i can say a good life to me in 20 years time will be to have a home worth 200 million dollar shillings a car worth 50 million dollars. So that's our goal, our destination. It's nation, yeah. What we want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A car worth 50 million dollars shillings. And a recurrent monthly expenditure budget of 3 million dollars shillings. Monthly. Mm -hmm. In that case, my interest is the 200 millions plus 50 millions plus a monthly 3 millions. I've attached a monetary value to. The interest then i come down to the activities which are going to help me achieve that interest okay which are the to-do list you talked about mm -hmm. then in order for me to get that i need to have a, a job maybe paying me five millions gross every every year sorry every month mm -hmm. or I, I need to have a business bringing in or making in a net profit mm -hmm. of three or four millions every month mm -hmm. you get me so attaching those values in monetary terms in ugandan shillings for example mm. to the activities and to the interest or the objectives or goals they want to achieve mm. is budgeting all right and um, if we budget mm. or when we budget mm. to what end um we budget in order to achieve our overall interest in the long term oh in the long term okay all long-term budgeting which we call financial planning mm -hmm. 
we budget in order for us as individuals to achieve our long-term interests. Like I, the example I said, mm. I, if my long-term interest is to have a good life, mm. and I define a good life in having a nice home, mm. a nice car, and these two will be worth 250 million shillings, mm. plus a monthly recurrent expenditure mm. of 3 million shillings every month. Mm. Those are our interests. In order for us to achieve those interests as individuals, mm. we need to plan. Okay. And we need to plan by attaching monetary figures to the activities we are going to do in order to achieve that. Mm. So, in the long term, someone plans in order to achieve the long term interests. Oh. But in the short term, we plan to achieve those activities or to achieve those minimum timely goals which are going to help us score into the long term, long -term oh. interests okay all right so let me bring this closer i have thought i would ask it later mm -hmm. but your explanation has drawn me closer mm -hmm. are you saying mm -hmm. budgeting is a long term plan or a long term product a long term thing can I budget in a month? Can I budget in a year? Uh, what is the shortest and the longest period of budgeting? At least that which is reasonable. Budgeting per se is not limited to only long term. Okay. But history and experience has informed us that very short term budgeting or financial planning is many times erroneous and will not be able to help individuals and businesses achieve the long-term interests I talked about. Mm -hmm. Because interests are very long-term, because visions are, are long-term, then budgets or financial plans should be long-term. Well, long-term, can you give us an estimated figure of long-term, what it means to be long-term? Long-term is usually, usually from five years onwards. Five years, ten years, twenty years. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, if someone for, for, for a financial plan of an individual, if for example you're starting out your family, your the long term will be 10, 20, 30, okay. 40 years. Okay. So when you're drawing up a financial plan, it should be covering that long term. So depending on different individuals and their stations in life, their long term will vary. But long term in this case in the financial planning or budgeting, it's five years, ten years, twenty years. And the shortest period? The shortest short, period short term, term you know, to me. Mm -hmm. Actually, when it comes to short term, when you draw out a long term budget, you then craft short term budgets which are scoring into the long term budget. Oh. Yeah. It's only prudent that we start with a long term budget of maybe five years. Mm -hmm. Or 10 years and then you draft annual budgets or yearly budgets which are going to fit into the long-term five-year budget and which are scoring which are coherent and logical into the achieving of the interest which are set out for the five years okay. then after drawing even the annual budgets you draw out quarterly budgets for three months every three months which are fitting within the annual budget. Are you saying that it is from the long budget? Yes. The long term budget, budget that yes. is, is from the long term budget that we deduce the short term. The short term. But not the reverse. Not the reverse. Okay. Because when you start from the short term budget, it does not give you the actual picture of what interest or objective or goal you want to achieve. All right. Yet with the long term budget, you start with the budgeting starts with the interest of what you Planning actually starts with the interest of what you want to achieve okay. in that specific period of time, which is usually a long term period. Mm -hmm. Now, that interest can only be expressed in a long term budget. Okay. Yet, if you start with the short term budget of maybe one month, one month cannot easily project what will be happening 60 months from that month, okay. which is five years from that very month. 
Mm. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. In this first episode, I've looked all. He has tried to help us understand what I mean or what he means by budgeting. When I'm budgeting or when we budget, what are we doing? To what end is budgeting or budgeting but to what purpose or why budgeting? And then lastly, he has helped us understand the difference between the short term and the long term budgeting because it is very important. Please, as we continue this discussion, please continue discussing, interacting with us and when we come back in the shortest while, we shall look at other three major factors that we shall, I shall be informing you about budgeting. Thank you. Stay with us. Welcome back from that short break. We are still here. Breed and grow business home weekly financial talk point. Budgeting is the topic. We before we went for this short break, you explained what we mean when we budget. I mean, when I budget, what am I doing? You also explained the goal or the end of budgeting. And then you also give us the two categories or the types. That is long-term budgeting versus short-term budgeting. When should I budget? When should we budget? And why, by the way? When should an individual draft a budget? Mm. Or when should an individual draft a financial plan? Mm. An individual should draft a financial plan when they have drafted a general plan. We start by drafting or setting interests. The way you set an interest or a vision or goals you want to achieve in a particular period of time, mm -hmm. then you go out to set or draft a plan to help you achieve those goals. In two years, yeah. I will. I want to have built. A business. A business. Um, a restaurant. A restaurant. Yes. So if in December 2021, mm. you, Mr. Peter Serwede, mm. you have an interest of setting up a restaurant by the end of 2023. 20, oh, 23. Mm. End of 2023. Mm. That means... My interest. That's an interest. Okay. You are supposed to sit down with yourself and maybe some other specialists in different areas who are key to giving you ideas on achieving that interest, then you draft a general plan of what you need, where you're going to market, where you're going to get the customers, which resources should be in place and everything. Then after that, after drafting that general plan is when you should draft a budget because as we say a budget is attaching money. monetary value to the items in the general plan i shall need a manager yeah. attach yeah I then see. to answer that question further at every stage of execution you should be budgeting again at every stage yes for example you can set out a five-year budget but budgets like plans are living documents. Mm. So after setting up the five-year plan, you will set up the annual plans for each of the five years. You get it? Okay. Then after setting up the five-year annual plans, you should go down and set up the monthly plans okay. for every month in the year. For every month in budget. the year. Yes. Okay. Now. Every time a month elapses, you review the budget, the, the actual income expenditure against the budgeted amount. Mm. And after that, you can adjust or make a new budget. 
depending on the previous results. Oh, so are you implying that uh, you, you don't make a budget once and for all? Mm. Can, can't I budget, this is 2021, mm. and I budget 2026, mm. and I only follow that, uh, like you said. So does that require me to revisit it now yes. and again? There are, in that case, we have many types of budgeting. We have what we call fixed budgeting okay. and flexible budgeting. Fixed budgeting is setting out, setting out certain things you are going to spend on and where you are going to get your cash inflows. But life has taught us that many times we look at getting, uh, for example, 36 million in a particular year and then you have a good year and instead of getting 36 million, you get 48 million. So that means that at the end of that year, if you had set out even the following year to, for you to earn 36 million, you can adjust your income for the other year upwards by in drafting the new budget. Reality many times is different from 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 from, from, from the projections. Yeah. So many times, even on the expenditure side, you may have budgeted to earn 36 million in a year and spend 36 million in that year. But then, if by the middle of that year, you discover you've, instead of adding uh, half of the 36, which is 18 million, you've earned 12 million, then you may end up having to readjust your cash outflows or your expenditures for, ne for the next half of the year. That means that you're, you're now redrafting your budget because of the, mm. what has transpired in the first half of the year. Mm. So many budgets are not stuck on as fixed. Reality helps us to, to have in real life flexible budgets. Budgets are living things. Mm. They are born, they grow, mm. they die, and in fact, they resurrect, they can be reborn. Mm. When we return, we shall be looking at the key considerations for budgeting. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is Breed and Grow Weekly Financial Talk Point. Looking at budgeting. Previously, you talked about uh, the, 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 the when, when should one budget. Help us now understand the key considerations. If I want to budget, if we want to budget, if I'm a company, a company CEO, for example, and I'd like to continue or to do this budgeting thing, mm -hmm. what are the key considerations? There are so many considerations which I can sum up in on the time horizon okay. when budgeting. Okay. This time horizon has three elements. And the three elements which are vital to anyone who wants to draft a budget are the past, the present, and the future. Mm. Before you draft any budget, you should know the history of all the elements in the budget. For example, if in your budget you would like to buy a personal vehicle, two years from now, that is in December 2023. Mm. You should know what type of vehicle and historically, you should know how much it costs. Okay. For example, if you wanted to buy a Subaru Forester from any bonded warehouse in Uganda mm. and you want to buy a 2008 model mm. in 2023, that means that you should know the history of how much a Subaru Forester model 2008 costs. Okay. So if, it, if for the past three years, it's been costing like three years ago, it was costing um, uh, maybe 50 million. Yeah. And two years ago, it was costing uh, 48 million. Yeah. And last year, it was costing 45 million. Mm. So that gives informs you 
or how much you're going to budget for it or in considering its past, its past year. And then you should look at the present. Okay. After looking at the history when you're drafting your budget. Okay. Going with the example of the vehicle, the Subaru Forest, the model 2008. Mm. The present of that vehicle should show you that almost this year we have another model of Subaru. Mm. 2012 model. 2010. Yeah, we have so many other models in mm. Ghana bonds. Mm. Now, these, these, uh, these new models have helped in reducing the price of the older model. Okay. So that means that when you want a, a, a model presently, the newer models have an impact on the value or the cost of the Subaru I want two years from now. Mm -hmm. Then two, the present should also inform me of how much it costs. Currently, it will be costing 43 million okay. in this year 2021. It should inform me of the current uh, government policy on, 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 on taxation okay. of, of imported vehicles. Okay. And cost of, what about cost of maintenance? We should look at the first the cost of maintenance and, uh, and, and other running costs, the cost of fuel, price all that present. And the present will help me project how much it will cost mm. in two years from now. Mm. The present also propels me to the future because you can, the present can tell you the trends the government is taking, for example. Currently, the government has a, a policy whereby it does not import vehicles which are, not, which are 15 years older. Mm. You have to bring in a vehicle which is 15 years or less in mm. Uganda. Mm. So that shows me that older models as of today, they are keeping their value intact because of that new policy. Mm. That means when I'm projecting to buy a 2008 model two years from now, it may not have lost that much value because of this new policy. So the future projections, mm. the environmental trends the government is taking, environmental trends mm. are said to increase in the future. In the future. Not only our government, but look at the world stage mm. in your, your financial plan as an individual. Mm. So you, you will end up projecting maybe this vehicle at the same price it's going today, mm. two years from now, after making those three timeline considerations. Oh, yeah. As we wind up, having understood that there is a clear distinction between our budget and a to-do list. Mm. What would you advise? What would you be your best advice? Mm. Would you advise that a lay person like I am mm. or somebody watching there would do the budgeting for themselves or not? And why? Because budgeting, at least for starters, budgeting has been understood as a matter of government. Every year we wait for budgets. But also budgets has been a word on our lips and in our hearts when somebody wants to go make a kwanjula or a wedding ceremony, okay, they do what we call budgets. In fact, as a parent, uh, you budget, that's the word people use, you budget every time children are going back to school. So somebody out there would think that you are complicating things which ought not to be complicated. So what would you advise? Would you advise that we, lay people, budget or otherwise and why? I would advise a lay person, a lay person in this case means someone who is not uh, very much acquainted with uh, financial matters, economic matters, or is not financially literate or financially intelligent. I would advise such an individual to stick to drafting to-do lists. Oh. When it comes to budgeting, this person can also indulge in particular activities budgets like introduction of quadrilateral budgets, mm -hmm. wedding budgets. Mm -hmm. But even when it gets to things like school fees budgeting, mm -hmm. this person can try 
drafting those budgets, but unfortunately, they may fall short because these small activities budgets fall into the accumulated budget, which includes all the activities of an individual. And the activities of this individual, they don't only stop at one year, to which many people leave themselves. Like at the end of the year, people have a to-do list that this year I want to do this and this new resolution and all that. Mm -hmm. And they, they know how much money they need in that year and how much they want to earn in that year. But then it goes beyond that. Life doesn't stop at one year. Mm -hmm. People who, don't, who depend on you don't stop at one year, even if you for you won't stop in that year. Mm -hmm. So budgeting, because it has different facets, it has different faces, it has different financial considerations mm -hmm. and different elements which cannot be met by a lay eye. Things like day to equity ratio, things like time value of money, which is deep, uh, depreciation or of, of, of depreciation of money and other assets. Mm. So, inflation. Those elements call in someone who has more understanding, mm. experience, okay. and knowledge in finances. A financial specialist or consultant mm. to help to guide you as an individual. Even before you become, you are a CEO, as you ask the question. Mm. Even at individual level, you need guidance in order for you to, to draft a coherent logical budget so, so, which is going to help you achieve your interests. Oh, so budgeting is a professional activity. Yes, it is. That you would advise that uh, somebody gets an expert to help them do that. Mm -hmm. Or even if someone is not, does not need, someone may not need an expert to draft a personal budget. Mm -hmm. But this person may need to get an expert to teach them how to draft a budget. This has been the financial talk point for Breed and Grow, the weekly financial talk point. The topic has been budgeting. What is budgeting? Budgeting toward end. When should I budget? What are the key considerations or considerations for budgeting? At Breed and Grow, this and many other things is what we do. We arm you to the teeth about key financial intelligence points that you ought to have in order to survive, thrive, and flourish. Until we meet again, bye-bye.